हेलो एंड वेलकम टू डॉक्टर रणिमा उपाध्याय केमिस्ट्री इन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड केमिस्ट्री लैब वीडियोस द टॉपिक ऑफ टुडेज वीडियो इज डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ डिसॉल्व्ड ऑक्सीजन बाय विंकलर मेथड एंड दिस वीडियो आई एम मेकिंग वन स्पेशल रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम माय स्टूडेंट्स कम्युनिटी इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल सो फार प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू वेट एंड ऑल्सो शेयर दिस वीडियो अमंग ऑल योर फ्रेंड्स एंड कलीग्स so let's begin with today's topic that is the determination of dissolved oxygen by winkler method and we will cover it in the question answer format so you can prepare for your theory as well as your viva gosi exam also what do you understand by dissolved oxygen and how it is abbreviated the dissolved oxygen is the amount of oxygen in milligrams that is present in the dissolved state in a liter of water and it is abbreviated as capital do is do important for aquatic life yes oxygen is an essential element of life and it plays a significant role for the survival of aquatic organisms also what is the state of dissolved oxygen present in water the oxygen which is present in the dissolved state in water is in the molecular state that is in the o2 state what are the sources of do in water the aerating action of vents dissolves oxygen in surface water it is also introduced as a result of aquatic plant photosynthesis what is the lower and upper limit of do in water the lower limit is around 5 mg per liter and the upper limit is around 10 to 10.5 mg per liter of dissolved oxygen in water what happens if the do falls below 5 ppm if the level of do falls below 5 ppm or 5 mg per liter in water then the aquatic life is put under stress and if the oxygen levels remains below 1 to 2 mg per liter for a few hours it can result in large fish kills causing hypoxic conditions what is the maximum level requirement of do in a healthy water body the total dissolved oxygen in water should not exceed 110% as it can be harmful to aquatic life is eutrophication of water bodies related to do yes depletion of do in water and presence of large quantities of nitrogen and phosphorus leads to eutrophication what is eutrophication it is the natural aging of lake or water bodies by nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus enrichment in water which results in the dense growth of algae which is also called algal bloom what is the effect of temperature on dissolution of oxygen in water the cold water can hold more dissolved oxygen compared to warm water therefore in winter when the temperature of the water is low the concentration of do is high whereas in summer the concentration of do is low in water as the temperature of the water is high why is testing of do in water important it's important as it is a direct indicator of an aquatic resources ability to support aquatic life what drawbacks are caused to the boiler if the feed water has a high concentration of do it leads to serious boiler drawback the boiler corrosion what is the significance of determination of do determination of do is important as it is the first step for the de determination of bod the biological oxygen demand its high concentration leads to corrosion of pipelines through which it is supplied and if the boiler feed water has a high concentration of do it leads to the boiler defect called boiler corrosion which chemical method is generally employed for determination of do it is the titrimetric winkler method which is employed for the determination of do what is the unit of do it is expressed as milligrams of oxygen in a liter of water or in parts per million ppm state the principle of winkler method in the water the dissolved oxygen is present in the molecular state 
that cannot undergo chemical reaction hence it is converted to reactive state you can go through the slide and concentrate on the reactions also so the first step where it is converted into reactive state the dissolved oxygen is converted into reactive state the water is treated with manganese sulfate solution mnso4 the do present in the water oxidizes the manganese to in the manganese sulfate solution to basic manganic oxide where the manganese is in the tetravalent state this basic manganic oxide reacts with the dissolved oxygen present in the water in the molecular state and acts as a oxygen carrier enabling the dissolved oxygen to convert it into the nascent oxygen in the acidic medium by itself reverting to the bivalent state of manganese that is manganese sulfate you can see here in the reaction the manganese sulfate in the alkaline medium turns to manganese hydroxide which reacts with the molecular oxygen present in the dissolved state in water to basic manganic oxide the tetravalent state of manganese which in the acidic medium reverts to the bivalent manganese state producing the nascent oxygen that is the reactive oxygen this nascent oxygen which is produced then oxidizes the potassium iodide solution in the acidic medium to produce iodine and this liberated iodine is then titrated against sodium thiosulfate solution using starch as the indicator the potassium iodide solution from which the iodine is liberated should contain small amount of sodium azide nan3 to destroy the nitrites if they are present in the water because if nitrites are present in the water they can interfere with the analysis so these points you must remember that which is the oxygen carrier and the states of manganese bivalent and tetravalent state and why the sodium azide is added what are the reagents required in the method the reagents required are manganese sulfate solution alkaline potassium iodide solution concentrated sulfuric acid solution sodium azide standard sodium thiosulfate solution and freshly prepared solution of starch which is used as indicator in this titration explain the brief procedure of the method take 300 ml of water sample from the water collected from the water body for determination of dissolved oxygen in a bod bottle to this add 3 ml manganese sulfate solution and 3 ml alkaline potassium iodide solution containing sodium azide stopper the bottle and shake it well allow the precipitate to settle down add 1 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid slowly and mix it well till the precipitate dissolves completely now pip it out 100 ml of this solution and titrate it with the standard sodium thiosulfate solution using freshly prepared starch solution as indicator at the end point the blue black color of the solution after addition of starch changes to milky white color run another titration to get a concordant value when is the starch indicator added it is added close to the end point when the solution becomes pale yellow after the addition of sodium thiosulfate solution what is the color of the solution after addition of starch and what is the color at the end point on addition of starch it turns to blue black which at the end point turns to milky white how is do calculated the do is calculated using the formula 
normality of oxygen is given by normality and volume of sodium thiosulfate divided by the volume of the sample taken for titration let it be say a now multiply it with the equivalent weight of oxygen which is 8 and to get it in milligrams per liter multiplied with 1000 is this an iodometric titration yes it is an iodometric titration and i have already uploaded a video on the demonstration of iodometric titration if you want to learn the titration please refer to that video i will give the link in the description box show the sequence of how the color changes in each step so you can see here the images the first where we have taken 100 ml water sample from the bod bottle the color is reddish brown to this sodium thiosulfate solution is added from the burette when it becomes pale yellow the starch is added and the blue black color which is formed in the conical flask the sodium thiosulfate solution is continued that is the addition of sodium thiosulfate solution is continued without refilling of the burette with the th sodium thiosulfate solution till it changes to milky white color that is at the end point state the advantages of the method the method is highly accurate and it gives reproducible results no calibration is required because we are not using any instrument what are the limitations of the method the sample should be analyzed immediately after collection of the sample if the sample is stored the oxygen is either consumed or it gets mixed up with the environmental oxygen procedure is time consuming and numerous samples are run simultaneously to get the accurate results the reagents used in the titration may pollute the environment, so they must be disposed of properly. What are the applications of studying DO? DO gives the information of the health of the aquatic systems, such as the pollution levels in the lakes and streams, amount of oxygen dissolved in water to support aquatic life in it, amount and type of biomass a specific water body can support rate of decomposition in water and the biological oxygen demand that is BOD determination. The same water which in which we are doing the determination of DO, we can store it for 5 days, repeat the same procedure and we can determine the BOD in the same water sample collected by the water body. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box. I have already told you that the lab demonstration of iodometric titration, I have already uploaded that video long back. If you want to learn that, please refer to the link of my video given in the description box.